Well, good. I'm glad it it's, all worked it's out. It's called so it's called the broken. it's called the Thursday Show, Gelman, or well, Galbit. <laughs> Galbit is our producer. Galbit. <laughs> and I said it's Tuesday. What's wrong with you, oh, God. And I hate and I hate all of you. <laughs> I'm so glad that we waited till Thursday to record this, so we could record oh. it so terribly. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. I couldn't. Uh, I actually, I had a mission yesterday, so I couldn't have recorded it anyway. Mm, it but uh, I feel like um, I'm going to regret asking this question. You don't have the speaker, do you? No, I don't have a speaker. It would be terrible anyway. So someone play the music. That doesn't matter. If, if, if we oh. had known this, any of the 46 45 minutes, minutes we've been getting you ready, then we would nope. be fine. We're doing it without music. Fine. No music. Welcome music. to Everyone nah. Racers. Nah, 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 nah. The show has started. Nah, 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 a show nah, nah, designed nah. for the world of low dollar nah, 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 nah. F up audio ding, 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 and ding, 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 It doesn't matter what kind of lemon you run. SCCA or NASA, we won't discriminate. As long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussion, tips, tricks, news and notes of the world of amateur endurance racing. And whether it's on the spot, hello, sweet, or we're lucky enough. And Chrissy gives us just a tip. We're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is giggled. Chris. I've already giggled so much. This is Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it's Jeff. You. <laughs> yes. And I'm mental. And I'm going to take this intro because it's oh. a well-written intro and Jeff's audio is terrible. And we are everyone racers. Thanks for coming back and listening to an American Graffiti episode of our podcast. American Graffiti is a coming of age film that Chrissy has never seen. It was directed by George Lucas, produced by Francis Ford Coppola and released nationally on August 11th, which was actually the day we were going to record when I wrote this, but it's yesterday, uh, back in 1973. The classic gearhead film is set in Modesto, California during 1962 and is a study of the early cruising and rock and roll culture. In 1995, the United States Library of Congress deemed the film culturally, historically, and aesthetically significant and selected it for preservation in the National Film Registry. You know what's also culturally, historically, and aesthetically significant? Oh, it's our God. E1R bingo card, which you should totally check out. Oh, nothing I thought you were going to say Chrissy's mom. Oh. <laughs> got a better one, got a better one for that. Oh. <laughs> oh, so... so Besides us being 45 minutes late, Holy American Airlines and sucks, uh, and a host of other issues, what you working on? Ow. Somebody. Who are you going first? I'll go first. All right, fine. I, I was, if you remember, what are you working on, Metal? You can't, yeah. do, you can't throw it to yourself. Right, so, Metal, okay. what are you working on? If you guys remember a few months ago, I had worked on my Toyota and it had like locked up, and I was hoping it was a clutch that had disintegrated because it was making a grinding noise. Yep. Got the engine and transmission pulled out of it, uh, separated them. Nope. Clutch worn, greasy. You could see why it was slipping. It was fine, uh, but it was all intact. So I put the engine, got it up on a stand, put the oil plug and about three quarts of water. Oh, then the oil came out. Blah, blah, blah. Well, is it locked? Like, can you turn over the breaker bar or is it? I it's, actually, it's a, it's a 20 R like it should, it kind yeah, of, right. no matter what, if it, 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 ends, it seized on me while, I, while it was, while it was in the car, it was running. It was like, rah, 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 rah. Uh, so I have not attempted to do that. LS I was going <laughs> oh, to, I was going to spin it over next week when I get a chance, pull the oil pan and see if I can see anything obvious in there. But regardless, it's suddenly extended into a longer term project oh. but i am also currently in beautiful downtown joliet illinois because i am working the uh autobahn the doing time and joliet race for lemons so I'm if gonna... you're coming i wear a large t-shirt and i like the mango white claws if you're not bringing tequila oh uh, he needs one i'm going to suggest if the motor in the toyota truly is locked up mm -hmm. that you let it go and concentrate back on the volvo because yeah. the Volvo is cooler. You think? The, you think I the do. Volvo is cooler than my, yeah. my, my old Toyota? Yeah. If you're going to do all the work to put a motor in something, I think the Volvo is cooler. My opinion. And it's a, it's an interesting take. Listeners, what do you guys think? And we'll post this up well, this I weekend. We'll post we pictures of my Volvo and we'll post oh, a man. picture of my Toyota. And what it's do a, you it's guys a, think? It's a Volvo 240 nerd wagon. White with blue interior. Mm -hmm. Vinyl. Pretty rust free. Yeah. yeah. Four speed or five speed. It's a four speed with the electronic overdrive. Yep. It's like my Corvette. And it's a it's a slick roof, so I don't have a roof rack on it, which is apparently rare. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's cooler. Unmodified, that's unmolested. My 78 Toyota Hilux uh, is also unmodified, very molested. Yes. Uh, and incredibly <laughs> rust free. So your, your truck is like, hey, I say, I've seen some shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we, we talked about it way back in the SEMA episode. So, yeah, uh, listeners, if you've been, got input, uh, truck versus Volvo. Your truck's been so molested that the Boy Scouts and the Roman Catholic Church owes it money. <laughs> <laughs> About right. You know, it's funny with your, you're not the loudest person on the show. So we, you basically should put your hand up anytime you want to talk because you can't hear you. Good. Thanks. I'm sorry. For those of you who don't know, I sound Jeff, terrible. what are you working on? Just keep rolling. Okay. <laughs> I am, uh, I was racing and I was swimming in braking clutch fluid and I am only about an hour away from mental. Uh, I am visiting my wife's aunt who lives in Oak Park, Illinois, which is about one mile from Chicago proper and about an hour from mental. That's all I'm working on. Great. Cool. And that is why my audio is terrible. Because we spent 30 of the 45 minutes. Something is wrong with my way computer. To wait for you to figure yeah. out how it to not be a wah, wah. No it trombone happen. to play tonight either. No trombone. Nope. <laughs> hey, which car did you take? Did you take uh, Jens or did you take we the did. Hyundai? We took Jens. It's bigger. I have to bring a lot of tools. Because uh, this is my aunt's new condo, Ooh. and I am going to be doing lots of things like building closets and repairing things and hanging things and changing faucets. So something left Jeff left out. Jeff, well, I'm going to go with Jen because the handwriting was legible. Uh, also managed to send me a lovely care package of uh, Mercedes Patronus F1 gear. So I got a cool hoodie oh. and a tie dyed shirt. I was like a little, nice. I, was, I was like a little jealous. And then Jeff was like, you could have asked me for one. And I was like, oh, <laughs> or you can go to the store. Oh. Yep. Chris, okay. what are you working on? Oh, you know what I was working on? I was racing. I, I was packing. I was racing. And then I was unpacking. We did a lot of unpacking. And then we did a freaking clean of the whole freaking house because it's been months, like a month and a half of constant weekends, long weekends. We were here for a couple of days. We made a mess. We would leave for a long weekend and start over again. So our whole house has been a mess. We cleaned all the rooms. We scrubbed floors. We, we, Chris did like, we did like deep cleaning. We've cleaned like the basement. So, um, we've just done a lot of cleaning since we've been back. So productive. And it's also check it off in your bingo card. So freaking hot here that you walk outside and you bake. And this is mental laughing because Las Vegas is hot. This is like 97% humidity. It's rain. It's, it is, it does super rainstorms every day because it's so freaking hot. And then the, the rainstorms don't actually cool it off. It's just so freaking hot. It's just Florida out, weather. Yeah, it is. I went out <clears throat> and I, I, I empathize because we had a stack of thunderstorms come oh, through and our, so hum- it, it, it was actually affecting flight operations uh, because the humidity no one's used to it. And, uh, you know, and I'm coming into work sweating and I'm like, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. And everyone oh, right. at work is like, yes, this is awful. And our humidity was like probably, you know, 10, 15%. It was oh, miserable. Oh. <laughs> I wish I have to recalculate their density out. The <laughs> like, I, oh, man. I, w- I went out you to the joke, but they actually did. I know. I'm sure. I, I went out to the car. I went to go look for something. I came back in and I, I honestly looked like I was sweat. I was uh, swimming. Like that's how sweating yeah. I was. And yeah, I was humidity like, humidity sucks. Oh. Nobody likes humidity. Wow. Yeah. Anyway. Terrible. And where we live, it's a hundred percent all the time. So yeah. Yep. That's what it's like now. It's so the, yeah, this weekend's yeah. the, this week is the worst of the summer so far. It is. It is. Yeah. Chris, Great. tell us how you're avoiding sweating. Uh, well, I mean, obviously outside. the Ray, yeah, yeah, I'm not going outside. Uh, but so all the things I've been doing instead, I have done a bunch of research and ordered a bunch of parts to fix things that broke in the Mazda here. Flash forward clutch and oil cooler and those parts are mostly here which is great um i have two hots actually remove it from the trailer and do anything but <laughs> I, the parts are mostly here so that's great uh, i've also been uh, prepping for a backpacking trip that we are taking next weekend is that the, the same one you guys took or are you you finding a new mountain new mountains actually different state even Ooh. you know we're Ooh. trying to do something different cool yeah. all right my audio is terrible, so I'm just going to say news and notes time. You can yell. It's okay. Well, news yelling. and notes time! Thank you. Thank you. Um, every Thanks, Tally. Thank you, yeah. 
Well, how did he get here? Alert, alert. Do you own a 2021 Ford Bronco with a hard top? No. If you do, I'm talking to the listeners, Chris, not you. I know there's, there's you like are. eight people that do yeah. so far. Uh, right. By the way, if you have a hard top, you're going to need another one. Uh, it turns <laughs> out, uh, or if you haven't received your hard top yet, uh, you're going to be waiting until like October to maybe get one yet. Uh, it was in a story in the drive. Uh, Automotive News actually broke the story. But the unpainted plastic roofs that were supposed to be ready in July to be shipped out for all the new Bronco owners. They're having problems. Ford itself says they blame the supplier that creates, quote, an unsatisfactory appearance when exposed to extreme weather and humidity. So there it is, humidity again. Ford insists that this defect does not impact the functionality of the molded, uh, the molded hardtop, just the color of the roof. Um, oh no, it does not impact the functionality of the molded in color hardtop roof uh but they're going to replace them all anyway because they look like hell story in the drive link in the show notes hey at least they're fixing it up front yeah that's good all right you probably heard in the news the u.s administration has laid down the law for electric vehicles last thursday president biden said a goal to speed up america's shift to electric targeting 50 percent of new cars on the road by 2030 which is super optimistic and not going to happen According to the Hustle newsletter, not all automakers have embraced the shift to electric, but soon they are probably going to have to. The three largest automobile markets, Europe, had 17% of new cars electric. China had 1.1 million electric vehicles sold, but the U.S., it's less than 4%. And we've definitely done a good job of just using different units, so you can't actually compare any of those three things. So um, a lot of those Chinese lease electrics are plugins, like the Chang Li, which tells you a lot because no one knows what that is. Anyway, the it's numbers a, it's, aside, if, if, if anyone that watches Jaloptic, they all know that uh, Torchinsky's got a Chang Li. It's the cheapest car available in the world. It's basically a golf cart with a, a cabin. Nice. It's hilarious. All right. So. U.S. automakers have some aspirations. General Motors wants to make only EVs by 2035. Possible. Toyota predicts 70 percent of U.S. sales will be EVs by 2030. Despite they don't have any EVs on sale right now, so dubious. They were Ford... so far ahead of the game. Well, in, in hybrids, the hybrids. How did yeah. they not? Because they're the they're step? hanging on to the hybrids because that's that's the transition step, and Toyota yeah. does it better than anybody. Ford announced forty percent of its vehicles will be electrify, electrified by twenty third. That means hybrid or electric. So, and they're on a they're on a good start. If if that uh, F one fifty Lightning takes off. Which it very well may. That's a great I am seeing Mach E's everywhere. I'm also interested, Ford, in addition to the F-150 Lightning, they're doing a lot with their commercial stuff because they've got all electric transits. Transits going, yeah. yeah. Well, for, for fleet customers, it makes some huge sense, especially the and, long-term view. Yeah, yeah. and that'll, that'll get their numbers up. Totally. So, hey, manufacturing is just one aspect. Europe has the benefit of government support. But, hey, even here, we made a big billions and billions of dollars to request to create charging stations because if there's no place to charge, no one's going to buy them. Um, so anyway, this, without that government loan, Tesla wouldn't even have gotten off the ground. So someone's going to support new technology. And here at Everett Racers, we rethink the key to EV adoption is the first successful electric crap can race car. Someone's going to do it. I know a lot of people out there are thinking hard and plenty of lemons engineers in California work for Tesla. Like they know this stuff. No we they, we that. have not seen a serious attempt yet, have we? Well, I mean, Duff Beer, let's 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 call that mildly serious. They tried. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they learned a lot of lessons. They knew oh, yeah. going into it they were going to fail and oh, yeah. and, and, and 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 knocked off a lot of stuff. The uh, the college kids at Pit Race, they were all electrical engineers, and they actually sat down and said, Hey, are they serious about this fifty thousand dollar prize? You know, now granted, they couldn't get the alternator figured out in their Mercury, but that's not the point. The <laughs> yeah. point is, is you've got young racers that were already thinking about it. So I like that. Yeah. Hopefully someone tries at least. Anyway. When, when it was announced, there was lots of discussion about hot swapping batteries and Tesla, Brad, Tesla motors and something really light. And no one has done it yet. I guess we all stood at home with our yeah. COVID and didn't do it. I've even loaned out our data from winning races to other people who wanted to see it for understanding like How much what level of acceleration is yeah. needed, et cetera, et cetera. There's some smart right. people crunching the numbers. 
On the back off of the electric thing and onto traditional stuff, Nissan has finally updated their Frontier midsize pickup. Now, the previous generation has existed with just minor facelifts since 1997. This is a staple of rental fleets, and it's not that it was a bad truck. It's just so dated. Jose Rodriguez Jr. gave us a walk around of all the press materials at Jalopnik, and the link of that is in our show notes. But noteworthy to our listeners, the 2022 base model starts at 27000 which is a bit pricey for that kind of truck. Uh, however, the only engine available across the line right now is a 3.8 liter direct injection V6 that makes 310 horsepower, 281 foot pounds of torque. Now, the Nissan website mentions all the towing features of the new model fully boxed, full length ladder frame, available class four, trailer sway control, and what they're calling the intelligent around view monitor, which is all the new vehicles have that they're, they're versions of the super cameras. But the site is actually devoid of any actual towing capacity numbers. But if anyone over at Nissan wants to give a team of sharp, popular automotive podcasters and experience a chance to give an honest assessment of the new frontiers towing capabilities in order to facilitate your marketing into the ever growing grassroots motorsports racing community you can get in touch with us at everyone racers at gmail.com everyone dot racers i'm sorry everyone dot racers. <laughs> they just emailed everyone racers and they're like oh ah, well, screw it. those losers gonna get it nobody them. got back to me oh, <laughs> we were gonna load it to them for a year i'm Damn. sorry those people are very busy and they cannot get back to their emails hey, if it'll tell at least seven thousand pounds we're in give it a, i'll try it with i've got an open trailer i'll give it a shot yeah Okay, anyway. on to my favorite subject. Formula One has confirmed that it will add a second U.S. race to its schedule in 2022. In fact, just nine months, uh, we can enjoy a Formula One race without having to wake up stupid early on a Sunday. James Gilboy at The Drive reports that F1 has confirmed its inaugural race at Miami Grand Prix is scheduled for Miami, or excuse me, May of next, next year. The 3.3-mile course will run the Hard Rock Stadium Complex in Miami Gardens. Is planned to have 19 corners, three potential DRS zones, which is a lot, uh, and top speed nearing 200 miles an hour. Formula One CEO Stefano, Stefano Domicali uh, told Racer Racers Magazine <laughs> they hope to have the rest of the provisional schedule in September or October, which is totally on par with all of the resting, rest of racing. Um, he added that even though high tickets or new tickets are not on sale, there is already crazy demand for it, uh, which is not surpri- not surprising at all. It would be exciting to go. Uh, what's not high? Jeff and Mental Standing and E1RF on Fantasy League. Uh, in fact, it's very sad. Uh, very funny, actually. Um, hey, fact, if it, they fix the points blah, and they blah, actually blah, find blah, a leader blah, of gas blah. inside uh, 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 Seb's car, Seb's, I will do, do all right. <laughs> Oh, he'll be yeah, fine Jeff, for a while. You're, you're, you're not jumping up. Just, no, just, just set not up. even it's, that much. It's, it's, it's basically you, then me, then Ron Harrington, and then the dummy account that I use to make the league. <laughs> and then Jim uh, Bauman, who hasn't played all, all year. Uh, <laughs> with everyone joining our league, they got pushed down even farther. So hop on our – no, don't don't join our fantasy league. Um, join us. Come on. No, it's fine. Come on. No, it's cool. don't join us uh links in the show notes maybe because i am tied for third so that's why i don't want to uh tell you to join uh with the other uh fantastic wakeman we will be uh so much fun it's gonna be had in 2022 uh except for maximus lexi racing who we need to know who you are because you're not going to get an award mental is talking about getting an award for whoever wins this league and i think you should shouldn't get an award we, because we show don't yourself. know who you are show yeah. yourself uh we will promise that we will like you you're very far ahead and i'm kind of convinced you're a bot but that's okay um and uh then a, 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 if, if it's not if it's, we don't know who you are apex apex adjacent uh is going to get the award because he is in the, in the lead right now but we're pretty close to the top so we have a good time with it a lot we fight over slack and stuff so start it Join us or don't join us, and that's fine too. Upcoming yep. races. Jeff was sleeping at the switch there. He's sleeping. 
Oh, she's <laughs> doing something. <laughs> Lucky Dog is gearing up for the Donnybrook Dogs at Brainerd International Raceway this weekend. Oh, don't you know? Unfortunately, it's a small field, only 19 cars. Oh, it's six wow. are BMWs, which is so boring. boring. Wow. Uh, wow. Three Miatas, one Honda, no Porsches, but. but. Jeff Don't is listening to us <laughs> on his phone. Uh-uh. But hey, the Maz- <laughs> mighty Maserati by Turbo from Eric Peterson Heck and Dan yeah. will be there. So they will surely dominate. I'll chime in, chime and, in here while. Oh. oh. Oh, it's over in Brainerd. Don't you know? <laughs> Don't you know? Oh. All right. That's Don't a, forget. Oh, yeah. short, August. It's a short toll for those guys. Okay. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. uh, August something to 22nd. Next week. The, the, okay. that, yeah, says, weekend, yeah. that says the wrong numbers, but it's the final weekend oh, for sorry. Raw Lucky Dog Carolina Cup at CMP. Hopefully, they will have their entry results. If not, they're always a freaking fantastic time. So, hopefully, you're going to join them. All right. Champ is up in the Great White North for their Calaboogie Enduro. Unfortunately, <gasps> are they going to go? Uh, I, I, well, I think they could. Oh. Uh, well, here's why. Keep going, mental. Go ahead. Exactly. Read ahead. The, the the Rona is playing havoc with the border crossings because they also only have 20 cars listed. Yeah. Six of those are BMWs, which are still oh, boring. boring. Two Miatas, six Hondas, one Porsche, and a Nissan Micra. What? That's cool. Canada uh, only. Well, only say. right. If only non, all about of, non-US. There we go. If only all of those 20 are actually can, Canadian. Can I? I think, they, I think they all are. That's I Spec think that's Micra. Why it's a, it's, yeah, it's a short. Small number. I've heard okay. Calaboogie is a, gr- a nice track, though. Yeah, that's what everybody says. People wanted yeah. to know, but they people get canceled. Yeah. Just can't get at the border. Uh, as men- as you mentioned, Mental is Illinois is Ill- in Illinois for the Doing Time and Joliet race in Audubon. Seventy one cars, which is a fantastic number for them. Only two BMWs, but I'm not even going to call not boring. Them. Not even boring uh, because Mid knows. Midwest knows how to f- have fun. One Miata for the same reason. Ten, ten Hondas. Heck yeah. Two Porsches and a uh, sell your purse, Jeff. There are five DSMs. I'm so excited by this. One, <laughs> do- one Dodge Stealth. An Eagle Talon. Right? <laughs> well, is that ki- that's okay? So a Dodge Stealth. I don't think counts as a DSM. Sure, it, it does. It's, it's absolutely. It's, it's a three Mitsubishi three thousand GT Dodge Delta. It's all the same crap. Oh, yeah, okay, that that it's, does. It's that's a that's a Diamond Star Motors. It's a Diamond Star Motors. You're right. Eagle Talon, which Jeff has a half totally. Um, yes. a, an Eclipse and two Lancers, which are total crap. But you're very excited about this. Yeah, I am. I'm. I'm sorry. It was the Lancers that I meant to say. I don't think they count as DSM. Yeah, uh, okay. I'll give you that because that was they were already out. Like Chrysler was already like, forget it. That was I'm after out. the conclusion of Diamond Star Motors. I agree, yeah, yeah. but but still, Eagle, Mitsubishi is still Eagle terrible. Sold rebadged Lancers. Oh yeah, absolutely but they did. That was in the Summit. '90s though. Yeah, that was in the '90s. By the yeah. time that one came out, if someone built rebadged their Eagle Summit as a Lancer, because when Mitsubishi sold oh. them, they called them like the Mirage and crap like that instead yeah. of the Lancer. Yeah. Unfortunately, oh, you know what? Maybe someone's cool. DSMs is plenty. <laughs> it's more DSMs than BMWs, which means well That's done. Pretty, oh, I, you know what? I wrote that and had not done the math on that. More DSMs than BMWs. That should be the motto for the weekend. I'm making sure that's going in the wrap up script. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Ready? Yeah. Champ Car ran the Lifeline 24-hour classic at VIR this Friday to Saturday. First was Pinkies out in a BMW. That's boring. But this is the third year in a row they've won the event, so it's extra boring because it wasn't even fun. <laughs> they doubled down because literally just a few feet behind was their second boring E30. Wow. Go do something more fun, people. Seriously. <laughs> Eight laps back was RVS Graphics. Also, in a boring BMW. If I race a BMW, I go to Champ Car. This is no, well, usually AER, but yeah. Yawn. Uh, sorry. It's a shame. They had 58 cars at VIR while we had 104 at Lemons at Thompson. Like, and it was, it was full VIR at night, 24 hours. True. That's a, that is, that is a great 58 track. cars in VIR isn't necessarily full. There's a lot of room there. No, I'm, I meant the full course, 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 not the full course. Oh, yes, yes. Full yeah, course. that's why I, that's full course. Oh, Overnight, a chance to drive yeah. at night at VIR. Man, folks, you, if you live in that area, you're missing out. That's a great course. It's don't. a wonderful course, but that's why I'm saying it's a shame. Like 58 cars, something's going wrong there. Holy crap. And that's out. all. That's what all I'm right. saying. 
Well, WRL was at High Plains in Colorado. This week, the weekend belonged to Stratus Racing. On Saturday, there were two laps ahead of the W2W car and three laps over third place finisher, the other W2W car. On Sunday, Stratus Racing took five lap win over our buddies at Kingpin and W2W held the spot on the podium podium with less than a second behind that. That's it. That's exciting. Is it? Too much to ask that Stratus Racing actually races a Stratus. I hope they race a Stratus. I'm sure they uh, do. Cloud not. car for the win. I, am I mean, sure it's got to be a BMW or a Porsche. They don't win over three laps over at. You high cannot place. be Stratus Racing without a cloud car. Nope, nope. I'm <laughs> sure, not allowed. I'm sure they're an M3. Kicked out. Kicked or, out. Or a, or a yeah, Porsche. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yep. All right, I will go slowly because I know my audio is terrible, and this is interesting news. Lemon was lemons was at Thompson. Woo, woo, we were there. Uh, more of this because this is the main topic of the show. But the quick rundown is uh, 24 hours of lemons knows what it needs and what it needs from an index of effluency. It gets our buddies in the Chrysler Cordoba. Yeah, red metal. Cordoba. I could ask. <laughs> uh, the Cordoba got hit four count it four times including once by betty more of that in a minute uh it really stayed out of the way i thought it was not in the way ever i thought it was quicker ever. than it usually is yeah. it was not yeah it was fine i thought it was great i didn't even come close to it this weekend so i don't know no. what's wrong i, I had more problems with the the polara or whatever that thing was than the cordoba like yeah. i went around the cordoba like yeah no problem see you later jim yeah Completely I was so happy crazy. to see that Mo- the, the the Cajun guys from Monaco on the pictures up there. That's a great team. Yeah. So the Cordoba was great. It looked great. And it really didn't. Uh, there was one dent in the door. But other than that, I don't think the other three injured it. So Now, bet the total damage that uh, like, not we Betty's We looked at it when it came in. in. <clears throat> the total damage to the Cordoba was one of the exhaust pipes was slightly less round. That's it. <laughs> yes. Well, anyway, we're glad to see the Cordoba win the IOE. Well deserved. Uh, keep running it; it's amazing. Uh, overall, was the Boston Winers in their boring BMW E30? Uh, yeah, whatever. Class B was Monkey House Racing. Jonah and the boys in their five, in their five cylinder Gulf ran literally ran the tires off that sucker oh I don't know my kind gosh of settings they're running but they were so excited oh they were they're, like yeah they were so day. excited they, they've they've worked hard they earned it absolutely first and well a volkswagen people. goes through a whole race doesn't break everyone's excited right <laughs> uh we are going to talk about class c because the class c winners were the hack factory motorsports they used to be called we love the tuna and we love these guys um, you know, not only is Brian and company, they threw together a great theme. It is a she- Chevy Monte Carlo that identifies as a Supra and it's painted up like Brian's Supra from the Fast and Furious. Uh, they sold it in judging and they got rid of the crappy, whatever three point, whatever liter V6 was in it. And it is now Ecotech swapped. So it's like, it's everything a lemons car should be. It's got a good theme. It's a car that does not belong on a road course. And then they did a stupid motor swap. 100%. Congratulations, boys. I think they can successfully say they have the most successful road racing Chevy Monte Carlo. Like front true, like that, true Monte that, Carlo, yes. That generation Chevy Monte Carlo in history. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, judges was Flatball Racing for having the better Lancia Scorpion. There were two different Scorpions in the race. Uh, org Truth. choice was an 82 escort pony oh little gosh. hash i believe was the team name or speed completely four speed. stock down oh. to the down to the douglas 13 inch all season it was, it was a beautiful oh, color yes. it was awesome it the was patina rough. was it lovely was patina. yeah the patina was fantastic it failed tech several times <laughs> uh, <laughs> someone had ground down every single weld on their whole cage every single weld yeah. so they had to weld every, every single thing. single weld again yeah uh, how much of that now and i i i know that that's very troublesome and annoying and i know that the tech inspectors don't like to do that but they got to do it for safety but there i can name at least three people that were in that paddock that were, were like you know 
fake mad. Oh, darn. I have to go weld. And it's not even like they had to do cutting and notching. All they got to do was run a beat. I imagine they could have like sold tickets like like Tom were... Sawyer whitewashing a fence. Nothing I'd rather do than weld up a cage. <laughs> I don't know. They were over in the Black Lake. We never, we never ventured over there to see how the other half lives. We, were... <laughs> I, uh, we did. I, we drove the little bikes over. Remember? Yeah, you barely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Scrooge went to. Was, everybody was gone research. when we went over. Yeah. Uh, Mensa, you know, over engineered. They have the E12 BMW that is WD49. I know. I saw the 39. pictures. Yeah, they don't anymore. I cried a little because we all it. love oh. Shark Nose Five Series. Yeah, I think it was beautiful. Uh, they also have a Mini Cooper, which they unveiled at Pittsburgh, and they put that into the wall at the same exact place they put their BMW in the wall. So that's how you get screwed. And that's a shame. Uh, that, that, that's a, they're they're across the board a good team. Oh yeah, great guys. And they're like, oh, don't worry, we'll get it back. So I believe them. Yeah, I don't know. they'll get it. They'll get it back before the Z comes back, Probably. even though it's just as bad. Because uh, heroic fix will go to the Baja Boosters. This is. The Mazda MX-3 that we had to fix, right? Yeah. Is that who this was? Yeah. Chris, tell them about this because my, my audio is terrible. Well, we saw them coming out of penalty and I was judging in the morning. Like the race is about to start. It's not started yet. And the driver is holding the transponder in his hand. So we're like, dude, it's not an easy pass. You don't just and, hold it out to the window every time you cross and, the line. And he said something like, we're supposed to put this on the car. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like he was yes, looking you at his are. Friends, like, what are we supposed to do with this again? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Christy, so we I took them. We took them under our wing, right to our paddock there, and then we started looking around. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, this is going to take a while. First thing I noticed, the driver who was belted in, his belts were around the side of his Hans. The Hans is just like a decorative necklace. <laughs> just flopping around so i went to try to put those over i couldn't because the belts were fully extended on this very very small gentleman that was in the car who was much smaller 85 pounds right than the three big dudes that were also around so they were going to work for him i said okay fine let me adjust the belts i go to adjust the belts the top loop had never been put back around the top on the belts all right, let's keep going. Then the car wouldn't start. Why won't it start? Well, the negative battery terminal was loose. So take the thing off. Oh, not only that, the battery wasn't really tied down. Well, let's fix that too. Then we're in the hatch doing all that. And you know what? The hatch is full of crap, like just dirt and slag and, and, metal and sticks and metal and shavings. Everything. They're woodland creatures. So we, like, <laughs> we get a vacuum from Dave, Uncle Dave. We're va- just vacuuming the back out on tight. All the, the while, I, battery I keep cable. Ta- I, I'm sitting with Kim, and they can Kim can yeah. see our us. And I said, I, you know, we're helping them, and we're still helping them. Oh God, we're they're getting the the vacuum out. Like we're still helping. <laughs> Kim's like, you're saving lives. <laughs> pretty much they were also running a tire brand that even i have never heard of <laughs> like and you wandered into the asian section at sema i know and it's none of those i don't even know what it was <laughs> i can't even i don't know no clue these poor people were so hopeless but good for them like they failed tech several times i don't know how they got signed off to go out on the track when we found them but whatever yeah, what, they, they weren't going to get on track anyway because they weren't going to pass the belt check yeah like but Ken, they would made, have, Ken would have been Ken like, would have caught him. Happened totally. Of that, so. They they were paddocked in the the unused part of the oval, like way over there. So anyone's been at Thompson knows, like no one paddocks over there. Well, they were, and they were doing a motor swap over oh, there. They did a motor swap too. Four cylinder MX three. Yeah, that's why they got. I don't know if they, they got, completed oh. said motor swap, but I don't know that. That's they what got they got heroic out. fix because they oh, were really they sad did. start okay, to story okay. weekend, but they finished. They they did. They them. were on the track at the end. And they got a yeah. lot of black flags too. So yeah. I'm sure they're driving that was a, as good as their uh, rough their weekend. Yeah. So uh the regional award, and I'm gonna screw it up because it's another language, went to uh the regional award was called this week. Do you want me to, just, do you want me to do it, Jeff? Yeah, do it. Yeah, do go it. for it. Vart for for store de du classiker. Which I know what that means. What does it mean? What does it mean? Why you, Why you ruin classic? classic. I, ruined classic. <laughs> no. I, I knew what it means because they, they said it. Uh, and I believe it is in Swedish. I think so. Because the Saab, the Saab motor. 
yeah, for the so half of a Nissan chassis. Oh yeah, that sounds like Ford what you buy Falcon at, over the top. That sounds just like what you. Jeff, buy you at, looked at this car. Tell us what I did, this is. I did. So um, this is the Rust in the Wind 300 ZX Z31 version, um, and they cut out the front. They cut the car in half, and they put the front under the front of the Falcon, and the back of a different Z31 under the back of the Falcon. And then they added 18 inches of homemade car in the middle. So it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a unibody car that they split in half, lengthened, and then put a falcon as a hat. And it was fantastic and it looked great and it was very well done. And it ran when it ran, it went around like stink. Well, that car was fast before. They yeah. won. Those guys know how to drive too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they have. Yeah. Nice. So they won. Instead of sticking with something boring, they, they made hacked it. it up. They hacked nice. up their winning car. Absolutely. It looked nice. great out there. It looked yeah. great. Yeah. That's awesome. Listener feedback time. And we had lots of great pictures and comments from the whole weekend and people talking and tagging us on stuff. And we love it. Keep doing it. More on that in just a second. But the legendary Judge Phil dared to question the ingredients of our world-famous wart burgers, and he asked if they were, quote, East German-style hamburgers made with extra sawdust and chicken beaks, which is an obvious Phil-esque kind of reference to the former Soviet bloc, as he is often wont to do. He loves Happily, Eastern European dictators. He does. It's strange. Yeah. Happily, Chrissy was not alone in her defense of the delicious three-petal mafia trackside dinner staple. Scott McM chimed in about the word burgers can confirm even outsiders like him more. So our recent co-host and second listener, Bill F seconded the sentiment longtime listener, Jen S also make sure we didn't forget the cookies. Like we could ever forget the cookies. We'd probably leave the car home, bring the cookies. People would be less upset. Right. People yep. don't want us to be there. They'd be like, no. No. <laughs> I promptly showed her that the cookies were out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for the remaining list listeners, like Fear O'Brien, who is wondering a, a, a warp burger, what what, he, what a warp burger actually is, it harkens back to our first race with may, you may have guessed a warp burg. The warp burg 311 was a car produced in communist East Germany from 1956 to 1965. Hence, Judge Phil's joke about the filler material. You can actually still read about this whole saga on the Lemons forums, the wart w a r t dash burger. Uh, came from being a culinary mastermind and or mine. And now this is Chris's cul culinary mastermind and efficiency expert. I won't even take credit for it. In preparation for that race, he concocted the and prepared said burgers uh, that included all the toppings that you'd ever need inside the bacon and burger. Onions, mushrooms that are cooked in bacon fat, along with panko, cheese, and spices. A classic was born, and they have been served at three p.m. all the 3 p.m. races. And they're so good. They're served at our wedding and Warburger. Uh, I don't know if that's where he coined his Warburger Aaron. He um, solidified it there at least. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. For those of you who have not met Aaron, our friend on our team, he is what we term a luxury mammal. And there is nothing he likes better than beef in his mouth. And he will sit there like this, like Good. I mean, good. Are there seconds? <laughs> Has everyone had one yet? Can I get hold, another? Hold on. He waits he, patiently. He even he's calls very out. Patient. Absolutely. Yes. Very polite. Yes, absolutely. We'll give him as much as he's the word burglar. He's the polite word burglar. Like, <laughs> the one that lets you guys know before I steal these, I want to make sure you've all had one. Actually, yeah. the last. Actually, right? last time I Good. said, "There's some more over there. You can have them." He's like, "Are you sure?" Yes, I think yeah. everybody's eaten. You're fine. Yeah. Five minute yeah. warning. I'm going back. You got we five legit, We brought <laughs> you home. So that means, and we, like Chris has been eating them all week. So there were extra. True. Hmm. Yep. Could have eaten he, he's not one. really Sorry. the wart burglar. He's more the wart wimpy. He's like, yes. I'll <laughs> gladly have a second hamburger if there is one left. But I, of all the words that can describe AA Ron, wimpy, not you're one right. of them. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> True. I'll gladly race your race car for you if I can only have another Wart burger. I'll gladly weld up your poorly designed cage if I can only... I will only... fix that hunk of crap you have. Speaking of hunks of crap, we have the lovely I Suck at Racing Lemons I Racing League is back in full swing. So Sunday night, we had a full 
four races. It was awesome. It started with the No Pedal, No Wheel Invitational on the road course at Pocono. Tyler was back with his French horn. In the booth was Lady A, Randy Bish, and later Ron Harrington. Then we headed over to Concord, oh, which is a paved oval that once existed in North Carolina. It's now the housing development for Kia's Via Mustangs at night. That was hysterical. That evening wrapped up with two races of V Sanity, which is Formula V's at the Crandon Off-Road Track. Tomorrow, or today as you're listening to this, is the Fun Duro at Barber. Practice is opening at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. Green flag is at 8 Central Standard Time. It's going to be a 120-minute race, four fast repairs, 14 drive through penalties. Or rather, if you get 14 points, you're getting a uh, drive through penalty. It's team driving, one to three drivers per team with a 30-minute fuel limit. So you're going to have to pit. GT4s, McLaren's, Porsche's, BMW's, Class A's, Street Stocks, and the F4 500's, Class B's can be Skip Barber's, the TDI's, and the MX5's. We're really excited at that we're back doing the uh, that. And I even watched another uh, bearded sim race. He was doing uh, all Porsches at Daytona. And uh, again, great broadcast, a lot of fun. That's great. Just him in the booth? Uh, just him doing the, the tech stuff. Yeah. But uh, it was me, Lady A and Ron Harrington were doing the running mouth commentary. commentary. Yeah. Great. It's awesome. Or, it's awesome. or were you asking the Porsche race? Was that? I was asking. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm sorry. The Porsche race, he had professional, like actual racer commentators, guys. Oh, um, no. oh, oh, misunderstood right, the question. Right. Yeah. So same quality camera work, not a, you know, semi-intoxicated uh uh, Virginia-based journalist on her fifth beer, you know. Not not nearly as many penis jokes, I assume. True, yeah. Oh, well, we went racing. E1R went racing. I wasn't there because I was still coming off the race hangover from Thompson, but we went to Barber for Prep for Friday's Lemons and Doro. Uh, race one, A.A. Ron had the win as Uncle Dave did a wiener stomp right at the end. He said he was leading and then he just kind of screwed it all up. Uh, Uncle Dave pulled out the win in the second race. Uh, I can say I uh, recently I was uh, interacting on the social medias with the old Apex adjacent guys, and uh, they all now have new sim setups, and I invited them to our Monday night races. So if you're listening to us and you enjoy the Monday night races, uh, reach out to those guys and convince them that they should come race with us, you know, because they're doing so well not embarrassing us in the Formula One league. <laughs> hey, they have yet to experience surprise butt sex so it's that's true happen. actually are, are though, you sure they had an <laughs> episode <laughs> yeah that's true they had an oh. episode where they did a tour of their sim rigs and they oh. linked they linked i i reached out to them they linked me up to an etsy maker who makes 3d printed shift gates so i now it is now being shipped according to my etsy update i have a ferrari style uh gated shifter on in route for my logitech well, Lottie freaking da. Well, Lottie freaking da. You know who doesn't care? She has a gated shifter on her Mazda 5, even though she does, because it's one of those Mercedes style ones. That's good. It's Chrissy's mom. I didn't think anybody was going to take that bait, but I thought I would try anyway. Well, it was too late by that point. We already That's fine. Yours is good. I like it. Yeah. So uh, we haven't mentioned this, but mentally you've been gone for a while. We didn't say I welcome have. back, welcome True. back, mental. Thank um, you. Thank you. We hair were, is longer. Yeah, it is a little. It's a it's it's a civilian mental length hair. Still fantastic. Still super jealous. Um, but we are planning on doing our two hundredth episode celebration next week on our 200 and no four, no the week mm-hmm. after nope. the week mental went and bu- mental booked the guests without talking to any of us so okay, that, that changed that. actually i <laughs> talked to, i talked to jeff i did sorry he didn't you, look guys, at a you guys were you guys were at the cake i'm so sorry it was 205 i didn't think we'd be doing anything for 204 anyway we are going to do a live show ask eventually for eventually we someday. promise we promise we will. Two, weeks, two weeks i promise <laughs> But we are we are reminiscing about past shows, and tonight we're going to really quick go around the horn and talk about our most improved moment. No, it is not my audio at the moment. Oh because I know my it's gosh! Horrible. What's your degree? Um, in? Uh, shut up, oh, uh, dude. What is Stop. it that we have gotten good at oh, no. because of the show? And it's not broadcasting. It's not, <laughs> not broadcasting. <laughs> it's not podcasting at all. Editing. Oh. No, 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 not that either. Because we've never um, done it. 
Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you what I'm good at, and I'm going to shut up because my audio stinks and let you guys talk about it. But I love what we do on our social media. Chrissy and I went to those SEMA classes, and I never really cared, and I never really thought about social media as like a tool for getting more listeners. And I love when I do that. I love going on other people's podcasts and hawking the show. I love what we're putting out on YouTube. I love like thinking about how the algorithms work and how to get ourselves noticed. Um, it's something I never would have done before without a podcast that I, by the way, I make no money on. It just costs me like, you know, like some, per, you know, uh, uh, brain hall cells, passes, hall passes from the wife yep. oh. for every Tuesday. So yeah, that's what I love. I love kind of interacting with the fans and trying to build the audience. And I really using those it. tools as they're intended really has brought some great people into our orbit. I think that's True. yeah. Who else has something? I think that um, I feel at least I, I was going to say good at, but at least feel confident at being somewhat commentators. So I think when we've done lemons eye racing, I think it's that. But also I have like uh, there, recently I'm in as part of a um, United Way committee, which you, many of you may have heard that you know last couple of years I've done something with that. But we were talking about doing a a commentator for a, co a cornhole event, if we can have it live. And I'm like, I totes could do that. But I'm like, I don't want to tell work that I'm like, yeah, I can just be the commentator because I'm just like the quietish person. In the, no, not quiet, but well, anyway. I'm sure you're going to say all the jokes that I use on Saturday night when we were playing Fling the Dawn. I'm, I'm sure I'm not going to because I'm going to do be, you know, to quoting execs and asking them what they're feeling like. But I'm actually, but the, it's the confidence that I feel like I could probably pull this off because. Oh, you I absolutely like I, could. I know. You I totally know. could. You That's need to do that. But I wouldn't, have done, I wouldn't have done it if I, we hadn't just had this experience. So that's mm -hmm. fine. Cool. I think we've gotten better at winging it. <clears throat> Whatever it is that we're doing, <laughs> we can figure it out that day, day before, or right now. We got better at that. I'm That's the all. other way around. I think we've gotten better at like researching stuff. I said, you just you and, that's just you and me, Jeff. Yeah. Oh, no, I, think, <laughs> I, I think some of our best shows are the ones that like two weeks out, you're like, hey, let's do a show on this. I'm like, I don't know anything about that. I'm going to have to go read. Yeah. Which, cool. but, it, it, but Chris, you know, it, it is, uh, I, I, I stand there too, is, we don't have to have it all mapped out. I would say Jeff and I have gotten a lot better about crap. We should actually do some research on this. And you've gotten a whole lot more comfortable with stepping into something cold. Yeah. But I think our show is better when it's not scripted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, absolutely. absolutely. Have, have bullet points. We'll talk our, in general on our points where that comes from. But then. Wing it. Fuck it. We're doing it live. Yep. Wing it. Mental, what are you uh, glad to be? Along that subject, I've, I think adapting to new cars and tracks, if we go way back to when we first started, it was a whole thing that uh, we were you know, going on our Ross Bentley things, and it was something Chris had recommended about being able to put yourself in the zone. You know, when you know, you, when you know the car, you know, the track, you're feeling good and you're not even thinking about driving. You're just driving well and smooth and you're not tense and adapting to do that in a new car at a new track. Uh, as we talked about this shows, we we've really, we've met great people. We've expanded our network. I've met amazing racers and great teams and fantastic cars. And these cars are all completely different in one weekend. I was driving the wet ass Pontiac, the solstice and the Omega, you know, back to back. And these cars are built completely different. You know, for the longest time, it was the Honda and, and the truck or the Honda and the boat. And you could just really build a very familiar sense with that. Uh, they had, they had a dedicated approach. So now I've had great opportunities, but I've had to get in these cars dead cold, you know, flight was delayed or I couldn't get out of work and I show up and it's race day, get in a car. You ever been around this track? Nah, I'll figure You'll it out. Figure it out. I'll figure it out. And and genuinely, I feel like I'm I'm up to pace a lot faster than I used to be. It used to take me five to ten laps, and I feel like now I can get I can get up to a good pace in a car, probably in a lap or two. Chrissy, that's because you're a seed whore. A bit, I am, and and I would be king of the seed whores if it wasn't for Pantless Matt. 
you know, or, last or year's job. last year's national drivers champion yeah. bastard. That's because you're a dude, not a dick. <laughs> Thank you. I do appreciate that. <laughs> Most days. <laughs> <All right. laughs> With that, let's oh, talk about wow. Thompson. Bye. Time. I, I like how he flaps the microphone. Like it just sounds like. I'm trying to get that Whitney Houston. Uh, oh, that you didn't know, work. You know. Oh. Nope, didn't work. All right. Yeah, no. So anyway, we I want to hear mental from... try more. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so I'm trying oh. to announce the main topic time. What? <laughs> main topic time. We were at Thompson. We just got back from Thompson. Mental, we? you weren't there, but feel free to chime in on all of this because you're a Thompson uh, reigning champion, or at least were for about a, 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 a year, almost a week ago. I know. So uh, I was, it yeah. was it was genuinely emotionally painful not to be able to be there. Yeah, Even okay. if I knew I knew we we knew early on that there probably wasn't going to be a seat, but I actually really almost wanted to come out there, but just with my new job, there was no way I was going to be able to make that happen. So. Yeah. Um, how do we want to do this? Do we want to do this day by day? I think mean, chronologically. Chronologically. Yeah. Uh, who has something sure. for Thursday? I'll do something Thursday. Sure. Hey, yeah. well, Thanks for letting us in. Yep. Seriously. There's Thanks for giving nothing us- worse That's than that enough. mad dash Shoot. on Friday morning. And I'm well, sure let's overnight take it back. Employees- take take, take oh, the on. whole story. No, no, just like, let's tell the whole story in case you weren't there before or just don't sure. know what happened uh, before. Uh, we mentioned it last week, but we'll say it again. The Thompson is letting us in Thursday night, but usually they don't. So usually a whole bunch of racers crash in the parking lot of the Walmart. Uh, they get drunk. They go inside. They harass oh the employees. They don't harass the employees. They spill stuff. They laugh. They do what drunk people do. You and buy Fantastic annoying. Sharks. Yeah, buy Fantastic Sharks. And this, And then on Friday morning, they open the gate and we are all like, at 7 a.m. with our oh, motor driving. Yeah, blocking the in. road for yeah, a mile. Blocking road. the road. Yep, yeah. absolutely. And they have one person there and they can't get us all in. It takes us forever to check in and we are rushing to try and set up camp while uh, testing is starting. So it's just great to get in Thursday night and have all of that done. And thank Maybe you they possibly. listen. Maybe they listen to the show and went, oh, this is a point we can improve. No, no. They, no of anyone, they specifically don't listen to us. I, I think I think that the track employees have killed <laughs> themselves be, and then they've tried to recover because they've said, this is the worst thing that's ever happened. We need to fix this process. Even even though tiny, though, the, the traffic, the track management there is fantastic. They have, they have been fantastic, but they continue to be fantastic with different people. And even uh, Kim and, the, and Lemon's leadership says how great they are to work with. So, yeah, yeah. and you're right. They've had turnover. Yes. Not right. the same people. And the yep. people keep getting replaced with just as wonderful people. Yep. And, and we even dealt with some of them on Friday morning when they said, you know, what what's going on on. At all the parties and what's what's happening with all these things the tell the time how big is they're it very how, nice, how, much, yeah. how much electricity they need i mean they're wonderful they just kept being accommodating they're like what can we do to help you not what's going to happen so we can shut you down or be pissed at you it was really helpful information so um they're really good to work with but also uh, on thursday while thankful they gave us a very small window um chris and i pushed this to the last minute to try to get there uh we were going we tried a different route we thought this route would be, might be better than the worst route, not as good as the better route, and it was terrible. We were going through like one lane roads, and you know it was. It oh was, yeah, I was hustling uh, that we trailer hustling. through some one lane roads. <laughs> yeah. uh, like we were at, roads with then, no the kind of roads that don't have lines on them. No, that's the kind of roads we're doing. Oh yeah, no, yeah. and I was like, wait, those trees might hit us. Oh, okay, and, and oh, that's good. Jim oh. and I usually take those roads oh. with the trailer on the back of the RV, Holy crap. and it's, nope. yeah, we went Shouldn't the other that. way this time. We took ninety five all the way up, and it was much nicer. And even yeah. though it's a little longer, I think that's going to be. The we way were concerned about going. traffic. We left late. We knew that we had to be there by ten o'clock. Our window was somewhere between. At some point, was saying was we would arrive at nine thirty seven. And then it bumped up to 945 and 950. We rolled it in 951. Uh, Ooh, so it was really. With the road uh, closed really, as we get near the track. Road and closed. Tiny back roads. Random like, road, road closed. closed. Great. And Chris is like, well, where do I go? I don't, 
I don't know. I don't know. I have Through a road the barrier. You're no. looking at the map. Oh, well, I wasn't looking at the map. Because, whatever. Anyway, it was tight for us. So we were we were stressed and then we got there and everybody was already partying hard. Partying hard. So yep. Thursday worked out well for us. All good. Woke up Friday. Rocking. Chris starts off on Friday. So we had everything ready to go Thursday night, basically. Friday, we all got actually up at a pretty reasonable hour, like pretty early. Made breakfast. We had pancakes and deliciousness. And uh, track the driver's meeting was at 9.45 for the 10 o'clock track meeting. The driver's meeting is basically, so uh, there's a blend line. Goes all the way down to turn one now. Don't cross it. Do not cross Ooh. the blend line. That's a, uh, that's a change. That's interesting. Yes. Flat, you guys know the flags, right? And it's amazing. Yeah. I All love right. the new blend line. That's the driver's really meeting. Do. And then someone's like, there's questions. Someone's like, yeah, can we have passengers? I don't know. It's up to you guys. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Thompson, man. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and it's cheap and it's all day. Like anything else? No. Best, yeah, the, yeah. best, uh, best yeah. race testing. Best ever. testing so, day just, in so none of the session stuff, just open. Yeah. Open. Testing. Open. Well, track there's lunch. Day. Lunch break. That's okay. it. One, well, cause you, you, to the quarter workers. That makes yeah, sense. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But it's, but it's 150 bucks. You Man. stick a you stick a band around the with, cage in the yeah, car. Per with car, pass, any per passengers. Car. Any driver you want, exactly. And passengers. So we had a and wonderful, any passenger. wonderful testing We day. took random dudes. I as long as you had Kelly a blue wristband. From, yeah, yeah, as long as you sign the waiver, you could be a passenger. Fantastic. Other yeah. tracks, listen. Take note. They were, and they had a packed house of cars for this testing day because everyone said, hell yeah. I think all three of our cars tested, right? Were there, yeah. were there any non-lemon cars that jumped on it, or was it only for no, lemons? No, only lemons. lemons. Oh, it's fantastic. But, but with 104 lemons cars, I bet we probably had 60 of them out there. Easy. Oh, yeah. Well, 150 bucks. Yeah. You, you're... Everyone's out there. It was yeah. great. So uh, Mazda was ready when it rolled in. I, I got it ready. So, you know, 10, 15, I went out, did some laps. Car felt great. I figured out where where shift points are, which is basically onto the straight and off of the straight. It was really simple. Otherwise, just leave it in third. Um, you know, set some lap times. Got to play with some uh, telemetry. Thanks to Bill for use of a whole wide variety of various telemetry systems, mostly the Apex Pro we were playing with this weekend. So that was great to use. I did a few lap times. Um, and I think I took Jeff out for a little bit. Yep. We had a, a you know. A, little bit little time out there which is great um everything in the car was working wonderfully so then we sent everybody else out to go run their times with the telemetry and um, and i'll talk about how that worked you know later but uh it was great to be able to actually put all four drivers out in a car that is running reliably and consistently is easy to drive on a track we all know and with time that we actually got to use our time to look at the telemetry together and say, compare laps and say, well, okay, who's faster? Where, why are you faster? Let's think about this. Let's talk it through. And then go back out again to improve on things. Like it was a wonderful testing day. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. A flawless is what I wrote. Yeah. Well, Jeff, um, take it, take it over. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I went out with Chris, like you mentioned to get my expectations set. And then I did about a half hour Chris had already set a fast lap of, I believe, a 127. Um, 128. 128. Okay. I went out and I just got into the 129s and I felt fantastic. I was happy. I was ready to go. Um, we already mentioned that we, we then conferred with data and we looked at a few things. More importantly, I looked at the tires and I just, you know, like Chris... Was oh, that's true. We did a lot of tire to limit. Yeah. We, we did a lot. We did tire, a lot of temp, tire testing, temp yeah, and pressure stuff. Pressures. So we figured out where we are. But what the expectation that Chris kind of set while I was in the right seat was how much tire noise, where and when. And when I went out and did it, and I came back and we flipped the tires, and I saw no damage. The RS fours are amazing, but that's what gave me the confidence is seeing what Chris did saying, okay, that's how much we can abuse the tires. And then I went out and did it and I got a pretty good time. And then I came back and I looked at the tires and it convinced me that it was the right amount of howl for them. Sure. Well, based and, on the, the temperatures we were getting out of them, they were doing just fine. Yeah. By the way, RS4's 35 PSI hot seems to be a great setup if you have enough camber. 
Yeah. Yep. Uh, in the afternoon, I'll just say this real quick because it's a funny story. Uh, we were giving rides to other people and uh, Momrath uh, brought a few of their non-drivers because we had a seat and they didn't. And uh, Chrissy, I'll tell you about, she took out, but I took out some young guy. Um, I don't even like know. Jamie's cousin or something. Jamie's I think cousin it was. who's going to yeah. start doing lemons or something. And um, I said, you know, like, did you puke? Like, thumbs up means I'm going to keep going. Point means please take me back. Thumbs down means I'm going to puke. Like, we need to know. And he's like, I'm not going to puke. I'm not going to puke. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. So then we went out and, you know, like you kind of do a warm up lap, like you don't really hammer it when you have someone new in the car and the car totally had a hiccup, which Chris can explain, but the check engine light came on and the, the power steering stopped working. So I kind of screamed like, there's something wrong with the car and we're going to go in, but he didn't hear me. So I started pulling into the pits and he went, uh, is that it? Is that all the ride I get? I was like, no, 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 something's wrong with the car, dude. Don't worry, don't worry. So uh, we checked out the car. Everything was fine. We cycled the key. I went out and I clicked a set of 130s and 131s, like clockwork for like 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, I sure did. He gave me the thumbs up every single lap. He had a blast. I was talking to him. I was like, that's a 130. That's a great lap. And I was like, oh, that was a 132. You know, we got hung up. It was fantastic. That was Friday. Awesome. Chrissy? Yeah. What about, this, what's about this, oh no, I'm in trouble thing? Oh, that's later. That's Saturday. Okay. Uh, oh, I had, sorry. I had a, a similar um, instance. I think we did pretty well with uh, Fantastic. I, I thought it was pretty good. Um, we use a lot of data. I, I use a lot of data, but we before we went out, we conferred. We talked about breaking points. We talked about um, shifting points. So that was good. And I thought my, my stint was good. Um, I don't remember the times. They weren't that close to Christmas. I think it was a one thirty one. Yeah, you were like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think yeah. I made one thirties, but I I was one thirty one. And the problem is, once you go over the hill, uh, you have a straight that's not quite a straight, but you have plenty of time before you get to the start finish that clicks off the time. So you're like, I think this is good, and you're like, come on, come on, uh, mm, on the telemetry uh, that's in the car that you're watching. That's what she means. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. What you're seeing you're like you're like, oh you're, I, I pass 123. I'll get there. Oh, I'll get that's there. That's good. 24. Uh, 25, 26. Six, seven, eight, 30. Oh, oh no. Because you have plenty of time to look at it when you're especially when testing day, because there's not a lot of cars around. So um that was good. Um I yeah, we had a great time with I, I brought out Kelly, so which is um Brandon from uh Momrath's lady friend don't know right now which her the with the what she is uh, it's her first time in a race car so i was like cool we'll see how this goes um but she did great i did we did a thumbs up every every other lap at least uh she was fine she got out she seemed okay i didn't hear anything worse after she got out we had a good time um so yeah it was, it was and, good. and they were very thankful because okay. they have been trying to get out on the track for a long time Kelly has track, suited yeah. up like three times. Oh, she was doing few stops left. for them. So she's like, she suits up, or she, you know, somebody's, somebody's leftover suit. She suits up and does fuel stops. Oh, no, her. no. I mean, she's like strapped into our car and then not been able to get oh, out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. So she came over and you're like, oh, Jeff, Jeff's like, oh, you're going out? Yeah, I'm going out. Okay. Bring her. Okay. It's cool. Let's go. So yeah, we had a great time. Um, so after we got off track, it was good. We had a great track walk. So there was a lot of confusion on the track walk. So while the Thompson track is great, they had multiple things planned at the same time, like the driver's meeting. Yeah. Whatever you decide. Cool. They were going to have a actual bike race, like a legit actual bike bike race. Pedal bike. I'm sorry. Pedal bike. Bicycle. Bicycle. Awesome. While we were doing a track walk. (laughs) And then there were people running too. For some and reason that like, was happening too. Well, I think the runners were 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 um racers that were just running it. Oh, okay. I, th- I think they looked they didn't look at the official that official, but legit the bike race cyclist race was you know with with microphones and a tape and like legit race. So we had to be off the track at at six thirty. Well, no, they were like, well, you just whatever like, it is. The track anyway. was like, well, the the people can walk it while they're racing, and I was like. <laughs> No. So we have like 20, 
25 people. We stand there. We've got kids and dogs and we like scuff ourselves. Like, sit on, yeah, so we is, like, lay on the, by it, like we lay on the an track hour. and we like touch it. And I was like, we can't just like when the one kid runs that way and kit hits the bicyclist, we just, <laughs> we can't do that. Yeah. This is one of those, those great crashes. They always show on the tour de France where like somebody steps oh. over a barrier and takes out 70 Abs- of them. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Oh, there's, there was only like 25, cyclist but kim's like i'm trying i'm trying find the time and i was like you tell us the time and we'll start the we'll start the walk right we'll tell people when they need to start and stop but you have to give us like is it five to six thirty or is so it the, the bicycles went eight? out before us which is great that's what they, they got decided, their, yeah. they got theirs done clean everything up no problem anyway so it was a great nice track walk and met some uh met some new listeners yeah, people yeah, that, yeah. We, that we didn't really know before which was nice to have had a good good time I think we helped out. Hopefully the people seem to like it. So we're going to keep doing those. We like them. Outstanding. I bet the bicycles um, would have been faster if they'd made the track walk. Probably. Oh, and then we, and then we was... had Ward burgers and hot tub time and shenanigans ensued it's fun. as usual. <laughs> Not as fun as Saturday night though. Saturday. Well, all right. Saturday. Saturday let's go. Who okay. started off Saturday? Jim, Jim. Jim. Jim started Saturday. Yes. Did fine. No fine. problem. Did everything you needed to do. Yep. Got us up to like in the 20th, teens. I think, or yeah, high teens. High teens, 17, 18, I thought. Yeah, great. Sounds I got great. in. Did a good uh, pit stop. Chrissy gets in. Yep. Actually, there's, there's, there were some yellow and red flags even first thing in the morning. No yes, one got hurt. Jobs. Like, no, actually, no big deal. The red flag was, I think, an accidental red flag ish. Uh, no, they like said there was some it fluid was... on the track, maybe. And they said it was blocked. So I think two okay. cars went off and they were actually, and they didn't, couldn't start and they were blocking the track. Oh, okay. The, the actual it, track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think there was all of these things. They said, this is enough for us to stop. So nobody got hurt, I think, but that's what they said. It was actually blocked. And having that with two cars in the same place, we're going to be enough, enough to yep. be a problem. Yeah. And because of those flags, Jim was able to go two and a half hours on fuel, which is about all the car had. Uh, that's, that's good for that car as we'll find out. Not as we true. Keep going. Not I said, that's good. That's good for that car. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Mental. Mental. How did Jim do with two and a half hours in the car? Because I know this is by his own admission, something he wanted to work on. Uh, he was fine, but we fine, never Jim, tried to get him back out again. So. <laughs> Well, also, as the, we'll say, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll talk about how the Mazda that. also is just so easy to drive. Like the Civic is an assault on everything that you have. It just beats you up. Yeah. The Mazda is like, all right, how long you want to go? Right. This is like, do you want to go to Costco again? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Got it. Let's go to Costco again. All right. Uh, fifth, so 25th time. So then Chrissy got in. Yeah. Um, so I got in, it was uh, a fine shift. I, um, the only problem, the one bigger problem that I had is that I didn't have a cool shirt because the cool shirt, I had a cool shirt that worked, but if the, the piping was leaking. So every time I turned it on, I got a, um, what, what is a ball misting? I don't have balls, but, um, that's what, that's what Jim was calling it. Like, a ball misting. So my crotch was getting wet. Um, and I was like, so what do I do? I was like, let me fix it. And they're like, no, stay out. I said, okay. So, uh, Just turn it on only once in a while. So I turned it on every once in a while, get my pants yeah. wet. And I was like, I promise I'm not being in the seat. Everything's just getting wet. So uh, it was fine. I got in after Jim and I was fast enough and I kept pushing. I was uh, dicing. It was good. I was trying to push my, the couple, I had a couple corners that I was really working hard. Midway through my shift, I realized that uh, the couple corners that I was really struggling with, my eyes were just down at the apex. Absolutely. I was like, oh no, I must slow down to this turtle's turtle space because it was looking right at the apex and then all of a sudden i was like look over at that cone every time and i was like no problem done it was it it worked Uh, i fixed it midway through um i got legit pushed off track um i did not mean to get off track there's jeff found the picture of me actually off track i did not get a flag for it i was driving my line no problem at all and all of a sudden this guy comes into me hits me in the in the passenger side um not too much all the way you were all the way on the left of the track and he hits you this is important to say you weren't just driving your line no you were on the left curb and you were yeah. hit in the right doors and pushed off of the track. Like yes, you could right. not go any further left. It's no, like I was in the dirt. It's not like you were, the dir- <laughs> not like you were, not like you were turning the- right and there was someone there. No. no, you were on the left curbing and got I bumped was, off. I was, I yeah. was, and and I was like, well, if we went three wide, you thought somebody else was coming into you and you came to me, but we're pretty sure. Mm-hmm. So actually, one of Jonah, the the one guy who actually won B, saw saw it happen. 
And he was like, no, I legit saw them push you off track. And I was like, well, thanks for confirming, but I don't go yeah, off track. He, he so. thinks they were, they were watching him in their mirrors, trying uh, to keep him behind them and doing so they weren't paying attention yeah. and bumped you and off and put the first like, actual real dent in the Mazda. And yeah. every yeah. one of us was so happy. It was you driving. That's right. And that happened. But mental, your penalty of whoever gets the first dent in the Mazda has to buy the Civic. Fine, Guess we already what? have it. Already <laughs> have it. Already bought. <laughs> Chrissy already bought the Civic. No problem. All good. How did you feel about putting the first dent in it? Oh, I'm so freaking pissed. I'm so pissed. Like, it's one thing if I did it and if I was, I had anything to do with it. Yeah. I had nothing to do with it. And the car that hit her is, is, it's hit everything but the lottery. Everything but the lottery. It is so freaking messed up. And I was like, when it pulled in for something else, because it hit something else, they were looking at something else. And I was like, I'm looking for the white scratches because they legit just, just came into me for no reason. And it was, I was already off track, right? Like they said, and there's no reason for it. So that's why I'm pissed. If if I got flagged. Yeah. No, but if I had something to do with it, then I would feel better about it. But anyway, we're going to, we're going to work it into the next theme. So it's all good. My stint yep, was totally. My stint. Totally, we are. Yes, we are. Yeah. My stint was great. Great. Awesome. Jeff, how about you? Uh, I brought it uh, in at 13th. 15th, I think. Okay. I was no, say, yeah, I thought it was 13th. Like 13th or 14th. I, thought, I think it's 13th, 14th is okay. what it was. And then by the time, I think it was 14 when I, by the time we had pit stop. So uh, I don't know if y'all know this, but I'm an amazing race car driver. Also, I, I went 345. Oh, okay. Two and a half. I, uh, two and a half. Oh, I'm sorry. Two, two. Two, four, two and a half. Two and a half. Uh, okay. Two and a half. Yes, you went two and a half. Exactly two and a half. No you wanted else. to get out of the car. You were saying, yeah. I want to get out of the car right now. You didn't have fuel cut, but you were saying, I want to get out of the car. So we got you out of the car at 2.30. But no, it was perfect timing. Yeah. Now, now here comes my yeah. joke. I don't know if y'all know this, but I'm an amazing race car driver. I went out there and I won the race immediately. Totally I was you did. the best ever. I was slaying it. I was dicing the traffic. I was like hitting all of my marks. Everything was perfect. There was very little yellow flag, and some yellow flags. And I'm like, I'm winning. The, I'm amazing. I cannot be stopped. And then I call Chris in and I'm like, hey, Chris, I don't know how I'm doing out there, but I got an eighth of a tank, buddy. And uh, I, I don't know what's going on. Like how long I got left in my shift. And this looks at me and was like, he did not just say an eight. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we can't hear you because your mic's My mic is really terrible. You, you have to replace that for next race. Yes, have yes, to. I, and Chris I, is I've like, already got it ordered. He didn't, um, he didn't say eight. Uh, yeah, I said No, eight. he must not have said eight. I said eight. So Chris says, hey, buddy, you got to slow down. You got 45 minutes left. And my in brain- a two-hour shift. You were an hour, hour and 15 not minutes. Not two and a half. I right. was an hour and 15 minutes. And my brain went, Oh no, <laughs> I'm not going to make it. I don't have 45 more. I looked down at the gauge when you said you have 45 more minutes and it was already between an eighth and an E. I was like, I'm in trouble. Yep. So yeah, so I backed but you it. you made it. Just I barely. backed it out. I, I was like, I, I did not go full throttle for the next 45 minutes. I was brushing the brakes and doing a lot of coasting. I was, oh, it was, it was the most interesting intrigue because I wanted to keep on time and I'm sure my time slipped a little, but I you was, did, but not as much as you think. Not as, so. No, no. I don't think, I don't think it was that bad yeah. when I looked at it. Uh, you know, I lost a second or two, but whatever. And, in, in ex- you know, I had to make the window and I made the window and you call, you were like, two more and i'm like i hope i make it because i was just getting dressed because we weren't (laughs) quite there but yeah uh so i did the two more and i pulled it in and then all three cans went in which was five gallon tanks well the the third third one wasn't wasn't there was well i didn't know that at the time so i you know know, by the way it's a 14.2 gallon tank 14.2 gallon tank he puts three cans in and they all go empty and whoever was putting the can in was it jim or chrissy i don't remember uh, Jim, I think. It was Jim. Jim, yep. Jim kind of like like usually it spits out, and I expected it to like get full and spit out, and it just kind of went all in. And Jim went, okay, and he pulled it out, like shrugged, and was like, I guess it's full. 
put the cap on. And Chris got in. And I looked at Chrissy. I said, he doesn't have enough fuel. He's going to run out. Why didn't we put more it fuel It was full. In? We, two of them were five and a half and one was three. So that was 14 I'm sorry. Gallons. That's not how that conversation went. Jeff well, was flipping I, I was out. Like, Why did we put more fuel in? I said, in? Chris said, you pick your fuel. You fill your fuel. You fill yeah. your crap. You put. In I have 14 you want. gallons. The car doesn't take more than that. I was trying to minimize the splashback. I used every ounce. You did. Uh, totally did. Yeah. Oh, I need to slow down. Oh, you need, uh, you're yeah. a hot mess. Yeah. Yes, I I was driving nine tenths. I need to drive eight tenths next. Yeah. Time. So then I get in. Immediately, I say, you know, this clutch doesn't feel right. I keep driving. A couple laps later, clutch really doesn't feel right. So I didn't proceed to drive my shift with no I, I, clutch. No, you say not not right, not not engaging, not disengaging, uh, not disengaging fully. Like when I'm going to do the downshifts, it is it is definitely the synchro is working hard, and I'm waiting for the revs to match a little bit. Like and it's not working, and the pedal doesn't feel quite right. But definitely the way the shifter is going from fourth to third at the end of the straight is not the way it was yesterday. Okay, so you've got full pedal articulation, but not full mechanical articulation. Yes. Yeah, Got it. something's not right. But then eventually I lost full pedal articulation too. That wasn't working either. So I proceeded to drive my shift with no clutch. Chrissy. You just downshifted uh, and upshifted once. Yeah. You, that's all you needed to do. But you also um, uh, got a black flag. That I'm getting to yours. that. I'm, oh, I'm getting sorry. to that. So, that <laughs> you, you, inter- you drive your shift. Someone interrupts me. So I drive my shift with no card. clutch. No clutch at all. Uh, so, which is fine, you know, heel and toe rev match downshift in the braking zone. I got good at it, you know, pop from third to fourth coming up before they go over the hill. Okay. So you um, didn't just leave it in third. No, I still shift it. Okay. I still shift it. I was said, I could have left it in third. And no, well, down the straight, that would have been left. terrible. I would have rather leave it in fourth. Yeah. yeah Cause would. otherwise you're going, you know, 85 at this on the straight, just sitting yeah. there at red line. That's terrible. Right. Um, where fourth you want to no, you're right because i did a lot of laps in fourth yeah and you're okay so at the I'm end going of along. my shift there so was no, no clutch third. no clutch i'm working it i still get down to i get a 130 flat in traffic i get several of those working great um and then eventually i notice i'm using up a little too much gas too so i start doing half throttle that's the most i'm going to allow myself is half throttle but still the same shift points and I'm still setting mid one one thirty point zero five one thirty point zero seven. I'm like hell yeah with half throttle that's great. And I'm still burning gas because the car the gas gauge we're learning it takes a long time to get off full and like up down to a quarter and then it's once it's it past a quarter like a it just falls like a rock. We're like oh no, <laughs> so we don't like we don't know how the gauge works yet. So I, I'm and now at this point I'm using fourth. Wait, wait, and what fifth. you also forgot to mention is I'm it getting goes there way past F. Like e. you hit, way past E. Yeah, yeah. Like E is straight down. And it, you're at like 730 before. It goes back up. Back up. You're right. <laughs> but we don't we don't exactly know yet because we haven't really tried. So I, I'm using that. I'm using fourth and fifth. I'm still doing okay in my times, no problem. But also no clutch. And now it's then one time I come through four, and in my uh, corner of my eye, I see a red splash quick. Hang on a second. And I look at the oil pressure gauge and the next corner, it dips down. It's usually rock solid 70 ish pounds. Right. And it dips down to 40 as I get to the next corner and then back up. Hang on a second. So I keep watching it. It's fine. Except going through four, the tightest corner. I'm easing off and I go in and again, as I come to that corner, oil pressure light comes on. This is the early warning oil pressure light. We have two of them. One is the stock one at five pounds. One is an early warning with a brighter light up higher at 17. That one's the one that comes on. That's the pit so, now light. That's the, yeah, you best watch this. I'm the only one that's allowed to have it come on more than once. So for the rest of us, it's the pit now light. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the one on the dash is uh, shut it shut, off. Shut it off now. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I, it comes on. I'm going to the corner. And I see that the oil pressure is dropping down under 20. I'm like, oh, shit. Me, meanwhile, I'm already in the car going to buy clutch parts. Because I've diagnosed <laughs> this as I got. I don't have a hydraulic isn't there. It's probably a slave cylinder because it's a 252,000 mile part. 
let's go do that. Get it now. So th- the oil pressure is going down. And, and this is unusual because this car does not burn any oil whatsoever. We went through all of Pitt, all of Jersey and HPD and didn't add a drop. So something's wrong. Obviously something's wrong, but we have 15 minutes left in the day. Can I make it work with no clutch, no gas, and now no oil pressure? How long can I go? The oil pressure keeps getting worse to the point where I'm going 20 miles an hour around turn four to we try to also, keep oil pressure in the car. We should also mention we are deep in the top 10. At this I'm, I'm oh, eighth overall, yeah. eighth overall and leading class B when this happens. And so, we battled with the rest of them. They've dropped, they've come, they've yeah. dropped, they've come. And we said, this is the person you're battling. Like we are, yes, we are. In I had a great today. battle with Jonah. We had a lot of fun. Uh, so at this point though, we have 10 minutes left and the oil pressure is getting worse. We called it because I, I don't want to blow the motor up. It's not worth it. Chris and I are on the radio and we say like, it's the, not the, worth it. It's not worth it. Like we can win. No. We're not going to win. We're not going to do an engine swap. Like that's not going to worth it. Pull it so, in. Oh no. We pull it in. We say, let's see if we want to put engine well, oil in. Just we add a this. quart, right? Add, add a two quart. quarts. But we open the engine bay. We're like, holy shit. There's oil everywhere. It's all in the pan. It's all on the hood. It's all over the, it's all over everywhere. And we're like, shut it off. Yeah. We're, Chrissy, we're, I watch, we're... I see Chrissy and Jim open the hood and then I see them just not do anything. No. <laughs> the hood is open. I have the oil in my hand. Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. And, then, and then you put it down. <laughs> nope. And then I went, oh, nope. okay. We're, I get we're, it. We're good, right? So, There's no yeah. putting. So uh, I got out of the car and we, we pushed it into the garage. Uh, what, what had happened is an, an oil cooler uh, had cracked, not at any fitting, but where the, the, the fitting was welded to the top of the cooler. The bar, yeah. Before we even put on, it's an AN10 fitting at the top before we'd even screwed on our male, our female AN10 fittings where the male AN10 fitting was attached to the cooler from the factory. It cracked where that, that met at the base and it was seeping out very clearly. Like once we turned the light on, turned the motor on with a light on, it was, oh, yep, there's your problem. So, so something I don't think you guys have hit on and you should be kind of proud of because you did build an under tray for that car. No, that's stock. No, the oh, Z guys... we built in. No, the Z oh, we built in. Okay, so it's it's impressive that that much oil, that it's you know alarming, oh, like a crime scene when you yeah. open the hood. None of it got on the track. Oh, well, not it enough. Got on the I'm track. sure oh, it, <laughs> it was all over the car. It was all over stopped, the back of the car. It was all. Oh, we we was, all spent mm-hmm. the next two hours wiping oil off of every I surface using four rolls of yeah. paper towels. Some of and a, half a I was like, this is yeah. disgusting. Yeah. We washed Jim, stuff Jim on the side of the car. Jim just would go under the car and go back out to the front and go under the car again, back out the front, and go under the car again, back out the front. It was so gross. We had bumper off, cooler off. It was terrible. And then we then we said, okay, fine. Once it was clean enough to touch. And we loop the oil cooler out of the system to bypass it. Then uh, we replaced the clutch slave, had trouble bleeding it, got it bled finally, and then watched it actuate and said, cool, put it down, torque the wheels, we're done, have a drink. Yeah. And we had and a nice I, party. Yes. I want to say that the physical putting of the slave on was simple as pie. Bleeding was a mother but well, we got it done. If you had a pressure on the reservoir Absolutely. at home, it would have been super yeah. easy. Yeah. The way it was, not so much. Anyway, so much. we struggled with it for 45 minutes or an hour. It worked. It's done. Put the car in the ground, had a good time, had a um, wonderful version of our own Olympic sport that we've created that uh, well, come see us in New Hampshire. Yeah, come er, see us. Um, at, well, er, Eric came Eric one. It was the, game. The, the international dong bouncing league championship of america yeah um we also uh, we had did, a... we did have that fish featured in our instagram story of yeah. alex's video uh because I, I i saw the video on There's facebook a video there should not be videos <laughs> there, i saw a video on facebook of someone i didn't know hurling oh. a dong i'm like who's who's this yo yo and then suddenly you see chrissy coming to the picture go no 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 and immediately begin correcting the technique and i'm like okay that's proper oh no oh no 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 this has a little bit further back anyway um there was also a half-assed um potluck there was a pig, two it pigs that were three quarter ass. Well, oh, the, 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 the pig the was, the pig was full ass. 
but no one else brought anything. The picture yeah. after the photos that you posted from the two years ago potluck, holy crap and a half. Yeah. There was so much food there. There was not much food that was the they didn't add they didn't advertise it. Oh, well. they, they didn't advertise it. No. Uh so there was like a whole lot of baked beans, some rolls because and we brought that. potato salad and yeah pork that's all that was at this this potluck which is very, kind of sad um and there was a band the band was fantastic so greg also uh, brought his, by the three pedal mafia coats uh greg brought his friends that were awesome in the paddock they were fantastic in the paddock and then they were fantastic uh as band so we yeah. had a great time a little, on... uh, a little cover band with the rock yeah. and roll action well they were country great. Clang on friday night they were yeah. great and uh, is that oh well, they were what they did friday they and did saturday. friday night and saturday night yep 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 so all right. So uh let's talk about Sunday at Thompson. Let me tell you how Oh, hang on is. just a second before we oh. jump into that Sunday at Thompson. Uh let me see if I can get this to work. Oh, here we are. So there's that. I'm gonna share the screen for a here's, second. Here's the reason we're on YouTube. Yeah. God, okay. Is this I don't is this safe for work? Can't really see. Yeah, you can't really see what's <laughs> going really on. But here you see. The, that's better. That's better that you can't really see. <laughs> no, I, I'm, the car, I'm the carney's helper okay i uh, that's so, a, yeah. no, no more no more <laughs> we, we, we don't want to get a, a an fsw on our right yeah. on our youtube channel but I, I i i i didn't know you guys didn't know there was a video because i was like oh, oh wow they, uh, was, they're I, using I, a trampoline we, we a were trampoline busy. the marital aid and a hot tub i'm yeah, so go. mad i'm not there oh my god yes uh, that yes. was the second annual invitational because true we did it at Jersey true Day. Anyway, let's talk about Sunday at Thompson. Let's Sunday talk about Thompson, Sunday. Uh, we're not allowed to start a race motor until noon. So really, this has become the new capital offense. This is the new summit point. <laughs> hide your wife. Hide your kids. We're partying all night long. We had a live band. Luckily, no one got knifed and no one caught on fire, which has happened at previous Thompson. Because Thompson is, they, they do kind of, I don't, I don't want to say condone, but they actually encourage people to have a good time. Yeah. So, um, yeah. That the was... fact that it's late, late, we race late and it's warm and we start at noon the next day means. You don't have, have to worry time. about Caligula. over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so since, let, let, let me just check some story from Saturday. Chris, you said we just kind of closed the hood and fueled the car and figured we were done. Yeah. Did we drive the car around the paddock? No, because it was 1130 at night. And they say Sunday no race motors after race. eight. So Sunday morning before the race. What do we do? It's registered. We push we the car. Have... We push the car over to there because they say no race motors. Okay. We saw the clutch worked. We watched the actuation. And, and you could fine. play the lawyer ball of... It's got plates on it, but I do remember a couple of years ago when we started Godzilla and at idle Godzilla is very quiet. Wow. And within a minute manager wow. is in our face about and it. He was so that guy was a dick about it too. He just was just right. trying to be, be like yelling aggressive instead of saying, Hey, we can't have any race motors till noon and shut it off. He just said that. I said, Oh, okay, and, and he, it, just, it, he just gets in I my face. Shut it off! Yeah, exactly. I think it's because there, there is a church nearby and they've probably had some incidents. So you could, yeah. you could say, well, it was tag. We could drive it around, but tracks, but tracks that accommodating, way, not let the track make, uh, let the track look bad. Sa- Saturday night at 1130, we totally could have driven it around the paddock. Uh, you were drinking. Nah, we, we just said we're so done. Well, we, we knew there was a problem. The we clutch, the the clutch hydraulics were not working. We so fixed Jeff that had problem. One claw, so there's that. We well, we fixed the problem because <laughs> it was no hydraulics. Now we have hydraulics. Great. Actually, thanks to Done. Jamie, I was several ciders in at that time. So. <laughs> anyway, uh, but anyway, yeah. So I'm all suited up. I'm ready to dominate again because I am the best racer ever. And the green, well, not the green flag. We enter. It's noon. We turn on the race cars. We start moving the race cars onto the track, and everyone except I everyone would accept us because I can't get the car to move. Oh, at everybody's all. like, "Go around, go, go Jeff!" Around. And I'm like, "I'm trying to go. I can't go." They're like, "Go, Jeff! Why don't you go? Because it won't go in gear." Uh yeah. This is when we knew we had problems. Oh, I would clutch, you know, and even pump the clutch. Clutch felt perfect. The hydraulics felt perfect. I under the, under the hood, work. you watch the slave the wood, work perfectly. 
But as I pushed the stick into first, all it did was lean on the synchros and make the car roll forward at a really yeah. slow pace. And, was... and once once you step on the, the the clutch, I'd watch the slave push on the fork, and then the fork would wobble. Yeah. Once it had a load on it, when it had oh. no load on it, no problem. Actuate it, wobble. So mm-hmm. something in there, we probably broke something on the pressure yeah, plate. It's, it's and, a, or a, there's a bearing that uh, yeah, it's, gave it's, up the it's, ghost. It's probably in the pressure plate. It won't dis, it won't disengage all the way. And as it, as the throw out bearing is going around it, it's it's doing this in any way. I, I'm going to say failure was unavoidable because if even at 11:30, if we would have driven around the track, we would not have had the parts or the time or anything oh, else. Or oh, interest. No. Oh, we would have just drank more, <laughs> slept more, and known that we weren't getting out on track. I just wouldn't have suited up and pushed yeah, it away. Yeah, that's us. Uh, that's it. We would have put it on the trailer right from the garage. I, I am definitely putting this into the wiener stepping category because Tr- agreed. we should have tested it. Agreed. But it wouldn't have changed anything. No. No. It At would all. not have gotten us an extra lap. Nope. I would have, I would have drank more instead. So that, that 85,000 mile clutch, stock clutch that was in it, <laughs> had enough. Sorry. That's okay. Anyway, okay. So this is why Jim didn't get in on Saturday, Sunday. I yep. didn't get any laps on Sunday. Anybody got any laps? So that's Sunday. There we go. Uh, I can give you yeah a rundown of what it is. It's obviously something in the clutch internally inside the bell housing. So I have ordered a you know actually we have another transmission here. There's a much that's a much less expensive transmission than the one that's in the car already. So we that's a, a sturdier transmission. So the sturdier, less expensive transmission. It's just we're ready a Mazda, to go. Trans, Mazda three transmission. It's a different Mazda three transmission, <clears> but <throat> it's uh, yes, better. It, yep, yep. Yeah, it's but it's it's again sturdier and way less expensive. So, but it requires a different flywheel and clutch and axles. So I ordered all those things today. Nothing special. Um, oh, no, to this week they're they're all almost all here. There's only axles, and I ordered a new uh, rear main seal because if I'm going to have the flywheel off. Going to do it. Yeah. I'm going to replace the main it's seal. Already just leaking anyway. Because of our no, it wasn't leaking at all. But okay, it has eighty five thousand miles on it. Going all I'm the way back to my to Toyota, to Toyota. When I knew when when I was going to pull the transmission off, I ordered a rear main. Yeah, like because you're there. You're there. Yeah, it was seven bucks it. on Amazon. Yeah, this yeah. one was thirty, but okay. Like I'm not pulling that all off for that again. That's no. going on. Uh, so, th- so that's that with the Mazda. I'm um, ordering a new oil cooler. It's already here. That's ready to go on to. It's just, it's just a crappy Chinese part that I ordered from Amazon this time. I got a better one. Okay. So Mazda will live again. No problem. These are solvable problems. Nothing that big. Especially if it doesn't go till uh, what Watkins, whichever. Yeah. I think we're trying to do Watkins going to VIR in early October. That's the next time the car is going to go out. So sounds good. But yep. uh, uh, for, NASA H- uh, HPDs, NASA. yeah. Okay, nice, nice. Uh, somebody, let's talk about the rest of the team. How the Cressida do? Cressida was rocked eighth I overall, saw I think, yeah. at the end. They were the Cressida. This is this is old school Cressida. But also, Aaron figured out why the car's a little slower this year than last year. Is that at pit and testing day when they were changing injectors, he had to have the distributor out and he put it back in and thought he had it in the right spot, but never retimed it. So he thinks his timing is oh, a little off, yeah. which is why the car very is very unerring thing to do. Right. Just a little down on power, which is like, Completely. like at Pitt, I was running down the Cressida and the yep. Mazda. I said, that's not right. Nope. Something's not right here. And we think that's it. So the, we expect the Cressida back to faster at New Hampshire. Good. Fantastic. Yeah. Star but the, I thought five. the Cressy, if, was I mistaken that I saw the Cressy in the top three briefly? No. No, nope. Betty was there. But Betty was. Oh, Betty got... was overall lead. I remember yeah, seeing yeah, that. Yeah. 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 Now, Cressida gradually worked themselves up they into seventh, top ten. Seventh, and I then think into... they were seventh overall. Yeah. Is what they yep. Yeah, well, they, had a, they had a perfect Cressida weekend. Yep. Yeah. They did. Yeah. Yep. Steve, dishwasher fairy, Aaron, and uh, Dave, car owner, another solid, solid job. Little yep. down on power, still in the top ten. Yep. With because they just keep running. This, yeah. And like, they drive like, smooth and walk, clean. Yeah. No flags, no, flags no problems, no. Uh-uh. just drive. Actually, yeah. Steve got a flag, didn't he? No, Steve oh, doesn't. Come on. Steve, Steve got, got one flag oh, one time, on. and it wasn't even him. I got a flag this time. I'm driving around, and I get a flag. It's pointed at me, and i like, at 41, okay, fine. I flash my lights at the at the corner worker to acknowledge it, and I say, and I said, you know, I we just, have lights. Right. I said, Here. I got a black flag, and they say, Chrissy's like, hang on. I said, I didn't do what? anything. No. See, the only thing no. that I could have done when I don't, when you don't know why you have a flag, it, it's, it's probably yellow. pass under yellow, but I don't even remember many, much yellows. There wasn't yellows when you no. were out. And then Chrissy says, 
it was a spin. I you said, spun. I definitely didn't spin. I never and even I'm got like, sideways. And of course, I Kim's like anything. sad. She's like, oh, you did this. And I was like, nope, no. it's Chris. He doesn't spin. And when and I do, like, I'm like, and you just holy got crap, in. You I spun. got in not long ago, right? Like this was like a, you yeah. know, it was not I long. I definitely didn't spin. The, but you know who did spin? The was definitely broken at this point. Oh, yeah. yeah. But you know who did spin? Greg in Betty. Oh, Right in front of me. I passed him in the grass. Because he was and, sideways and, in turn but one. But we were like, we're like 41, 43. White Mazda, black Mazda. Arc seven. How are you thinking these are different? There are five variables there and two of them do match up. Mazda, sure, and, but, a, Mazda and a four. Well, yeah. we see, right? <laughs> but we also, yeah. but we're like, really? You're that far so off? And Chris I is came like, in for the flag with no clutch, by the way, which is exciting getting started <laughs> out of penalty. Because we're like, okay, and, we're going to have to push. Fortunately, we were all yeah. there. We're like, I can't even shame you because yeah, you did I said, I didn't, I didn't do it. I didn't, I would tell you if I did, I said to Manny, he's like, yeah, I know. The best part is, is Manny, or I think it was Eric Rude. Eric Rude pointed at the dent that Chrissy got the day before and was like, or earlier in the day and was like, well, this is your first black flag. And obviously something happened out there at some point in the day. So let's just consider this one. Right. Right. (laughs) You win some, you lose some, right? He's like, you don't have some black flags for things you do. You do have some black flags for you, things you don't. That's exactly what he said. And we're like, fine. Fine. You're right. Let that be a lesson to all of our listeners. Even if you didn't do anything, don't don't come Take in and start ride. arguing. Don't you got away with something with at this. some point during yeah. the day. Just, well, yeah. The just, best thing is, is that some people were there going, "No, it was Betty's flag. It was Betty's flag. And Betty's leading." And I'm like, right. "No, we're like, we're fine. We're fine. <laughs> we're and, and we said all flag. weekend. We told them all weekend. We're like, we took this flag for you, and they were like, we very much appreciate it. <laughs> and we're like, all the time, we're like, look, that was your black flag. <laughs> just, so you know. yeah. just so you know that was you yeah, yeah. Uh, right, so gonna... Jeff yeah, keep going on about what happened with Betty Black Betty so Black Betty uh, we want them to win this car should win it's fast enough if they could ever stop stepping on their wiener yeah Red I know flights so... at 2 a.m. go back and watch our Thompson oh. video on our YouTube channel where Jeff and I are like oh look all the cars are lining up Betty's on jack stands <laughs> yeah they they like are a little disorganized in the pits um, they're a little hungover on Sunday. Sometimes they're pro yes. I, they get a black Sunday? flag every now and then. Uh, <laughs> yes. Saturday too. Um, but they deserve a win and they're really, they, so Alex, uh, well-known Miata racer, Alex, uh, who's become a seat whore and he's everywhere. Uh, he kind of came in and he kind of organized them a little better. It was like an hour to go and he's like cleaning the windows. Everything's ready. It's like, it's like, man, Alex is classing up the joint. They got a real good chance. They finished Saturday leading on the lead lap. One other car, Moan Rath, about three behind in the catbird seat, uh, ready to win this race. And we just kept telling them, don't step on your wiener. Don't step on your wiener. Don't step on your wiener. And Alex, who is trying to class up the joint, slides the nose of Betty right into the Cordoba. Cordoba. I thought I was waiting for Mental to get the music together. I, uh, you got to, dude, it, I got to push like a lot of buttons. It fine, takes a lot. I, uh, but I can do Ricardo or Montalban. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So I know what me. I need when I damage my Mazda. And yeah. what I need, I get from this Cordoba. <sighs> yes. Anyway, it was uh, turn nine coming off of the road court, or coming off the oval and back onto the road course. It's really bumpy. He said he went hard on the brakes because the, the Cordoba was a little slower in front of him and it just skipped over the bumps and went right into the back of the Cordoba. And he was so upset with himself because I don't think he's ever been that close to a win. No, not even nowhere near it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he, and, and the boys haven't been, you know, they're, they've been that close a lot. They have been uh, bridesmaids several times, so they're used to it. But there's a, an extended yeah. discussion on Facebook. Uh, someone recognized that car from Watkins Glen at AR years ago. It's like, is this the actual Black Betty? And yes, actually, it is the Black Betty. And they're like, wow, she uh, 
she looks a little more rough, but man, that car is fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I will say it's very un Alex like to hit to have any kind of contact out there. Yeah. Uh, but very normal Betty to be winning the race <laughs> and then slide into a car that you're not you shouldn't hit. Uh, they got he had to bend the nose back out, duct tape the hood back together, lots of bending and duct tape, and he's gonna buy him a new nose and a new hood, new fenders and everything. Um, but yeah, after serving the penalty, they were in third place six laps down and they never recovered and that's kind of where they finished yep i get uh, honestly i'm I'm not trying to like defend anything but that does make sense you know i i know that turn yeah and i can imagine you know front end hopping a little bit and betty's pretty stiff on the nose sometimes so the cordova you can see you can huh? see, yeah, from a you, while away. You, you, you kind of should. Your have eyes seen are up in that corner, the other which side they of, should other be. side of the oval. Uh, Alex see. completely <laughs> admits that he screwed up. Yeah. yeah, he was. I was too hot, and I went hard on the brakes, harder than I should have, and I shouldn't have been there. And that's what this happened. is just. This is just the continuing story of Betty of yeah. wiener stepping. Well, and let anyone who has never been red misty when they got towards the pointy end or thought they were going to pull oh, something hell off, yeah. you know, yeah, cast like, the first yeah, stone. Been there. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's why the front of the Civic has a bed splitter. Yeah. It did until I fixed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. What, what else do we have to say about the Thompson race? It was a fantastic race. Love the staff at Thompson. They have held a great the, a great event. Uh, Lemon staff, as always, is wonderful, and we were happy to see them all. Great to see all the friends. Hope none of you get the COVID. Weather yeah. was pretty nice. Um, yeah. It, there's no water overflowing. I mean, the, I, I, well, I took showers no. when the showers were sh- lined were short, so it wasn't so bad. But um, it, overall, it wasn't oh, no. it was well. noteworthy. Yeah. It was fine. Yeah. Nice weekend. What about the right. ice cream? What was, what was with this ice cream thing? Been there like so, yeah, three times, so- never had ice cream. Yeah. They've. I, how many? Times there's a golf course times? there. There's a yeah. golf Holy course. Crap. I've run through, through that golf stand. course. Yeah. yeah, there's an ice cream stand, and it is fantastic. Myself and Bruce got fantastic ice cream. It's like literally outside of turn one, where the gravel parking lot is, across Three, from four. grass. It's four. Yeah. Four, four. The hairpin. Four. Whatever the hairpin. Four. 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 Yes. So it's outside of turn four, across the gravel parking lot, a little <laughs> up of grass, and you're on the golf course like restaurant. On the other side of the restaurant, fantastic. 50 oh flavors, 10 high school girls, scoop and ice cream. That's why Bruce kept going back. I know, probably. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, was trying to say, I was trying to say how big it was by saying there were like 10 people working oh. it. Um, oh. Like the whole town was there. I was like 30th in line. That's great. fantastic. Yeah. 30 is a, is a, is a, third, is a, is a much higher number than it actually was. <laughs> <laughs> this big <laughs> this exactly. much wow all right wow. i i feel like christy's time of useful consciousness is 30 minutes expired yes uh well, when it takes right. us 48 minutes to get the show started you are absolutely right. let's just keep moving all righty but terrible just the tip what are we doing tonight Johnson! the tip what now? Is this a safety thing or is this? Well, just a... this was a safety thing, but we're going to recap it because it was already recapped earlier from earlier. Uh, we're talking about car tech and how to make sure that your what, your car is actually going to pass tech when you get it into line. I feel so like this, this is a dude. Don't do that shit. Well, this is. This sure. Is yeah, a, it could be that. This is based on the car that we saw that didn't pass tech. And we said, holy crap, you're not. If, if you were to get past tech, which. They were close to passing tech. They were past tech. They, they were, were they past had a sticker. tech. So we talked about this with Lemon staff and made sure that this is really how it was going to go. Um, but making sure that you understand how to do these things. So one really big important thing is how to do your belts. So we found, Chris will note, that, that we found multiple people that didn't do their belts correctly. This they is talking about... Well, they don't know how to do the loop over the okay. harness bar. Okay. Do you want to do this? Well, Please. Do your belts correctly could go so many ways. That's all. I wasn't done yet. Do you, here, Chris, just you, do you, do you just adjust the tip? Nope. I'm mute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so here we go. Oh, While I'm the two people that are actually in the same house play chicken, go to the lemons, 24 hours lemons website, download the <laughs> how not to fail tech PowerPoint, print it. If you don't want to do that sort of thing, but they actually have a very well done 
animated view of exactly how to do your belts. And this is the key thing about these belts and why we're making a joke, but not really making a joke is a, a quarter of an inch or even an eighth of an inch of play in those belts in a situation where you find yourself needing them. That is an opportunity for you to accelerate. Now you do a, uh, you know, we, we talked about the 12 G crash corrosion had a, a while back and some other crashes like that, but it is completely possible in a lemons crash to experience upwards of four or five G's in my case, that would make me a thousand pounds. So if you have an inch, if you have a a quarter of an inch of play in your belts, that's coming out. And that is an opportunity for your now thousand pound body to accelerate and then go into those belts. And that's going to start cracking ribs, breaking collarbones, even with all your other safety gear. So go through, do it correctly, have those belts tight. If you don't know how to do it, you don't understand, ask somebody. Don't try to just assume that you know what you're doing. Also, uh, going back to the belts on the team that we're trying to assist and they're not having enough, make sure that they're long enough. Your belts are long enough for all of the drivers that you have. There needs to be some play. You should be able to pull it all the way down. Every person should be able to have some part of their belt that they need to be able to pull down. If you are the smallest person on their team and you have too much to be able to pull down and you are the, the length, the amount of belt that you have left is, is touching the seams of the, the next part of the belt, uh, make sure that you undo them. So take them out, uh, make sure that there's more belt available and there's enough of that slack between all of your drivers. And, uh, Move the seat when you make these measurements. Well, if you have a seat that moves. Because the short people might sit a lot closer to the steering wheel. Good call. And actually use more belts than the big people. All of your belts come with very long strands. Very, very long. So make, yes, do it right. Chris, what else do you have to say? Oh, good. Okay, cool. Um, Clean out your debris. So you say it's funny that you people that you you all laugh at us that we wash the car. We wash the inside. We wash the outside. Uh, you laugh, but it's fine. So, but make sure that you clean the stuff out because as soon as you drive and there's a lot of wind that that vortexes inside the car in ways that you don't think it does. As soon as there's any kind of stuff, there could be leaves. There could be metal shavings it could be dirt from before or just leftover parts all this stuff is going to fly up and it's going to fly like has potential to like fly into your helmet just because you don't know which way that wind is going to move so make sure you just take a little bit of time to clean out your debris make sure your battery tie down is is real so um it's not hard to make a couple pieces of metal probably really good to do before you leave your house because that's kind of stuff that needs a little bit of fabrication. Uh, But make sure that you are, again, following the rules that are in the rule book and making sure that that tie down is actually real and doesn't move. And you should be able to just hit the the box and make sure that the battery is actually stuck to the car, not the box. The box needs to be stuck to the car, but the battery itself also needs to be secure to the car. If it's not, the battery terminal has the option to hit things around and then can start a fire which is stupid so um make sure that that is already done before you even go to tech go ahead go ahead mr nasty or if the battery is loose it is now a 40 pound projectile moving around your car my goodness and a half that is more what matters than the fire stuff is the heavy projectile it's going to hit you in the head or something else which times four is now a 160 pound projectile hey, uh, four is a very light crash metal like 20 is is good you know yeah that's more we're looking at yeah yeah Um, so my last thing, but this is probably not the last thing because this is very abbreviated of all the things you should be dealing with when your car is checking, uh, make sure you put in your transponder in the correct spot. Don't have your person, your driver, hold it as like a, uh, a easy pass. Like they're going to hold it over every time you pass the start finish line to make sure that it's out there. Don't do that. Put your arm out the window, get it real close to the ground. Totally fine. Especially if you're renting one, make sure that you are, you're having it. If you don't, don't rent one. Make sure that your mount is in the correct spot. So we need to be before um, somewhere under the car in a place that is unrestricted, uncovered, and maybe somebody else can fill in here on a clear view for- to the ground. That's, the most, the that's the most important thing. And a good protected spot, not zip tied to your exhaust. 
because it'll melt because it's plastic. Didn't, yep. didn't young Chris Egan or Tom Lamino, one of them, melt their trans bonds? It wasn't Chris. He's smarter yeah, than that. And uh, also Imagine not zip tied to your very front bumper because it will get hit and either yeah. fall off or get smashed. Yeah. In either case, you owe Kim cash. Rear tow hooks are great spots to put it, like the, the stock ones, mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah. Cool. All right. Is that the end of the just the tip? Abbreviated. Yep. Abbreviated. That's all right. It's late. Wow. Re- You're re- not re- even getting the full tip. You're getting an abbreviated tip. Oh. The well, tip of the tip. Such you get disappointment. You get the tip. <laughs> it's just a tease. Uh, just the tease. Do, next show, do we have any clue what we're doing? We do. I am very excited. We have got long-term Haggerty contributor Kyle Smith as a guest. He actually reached out to us on that social media. You could see him on Kyle's Garage on the Haggerty channel on YouTube. In addition to his education, he's a McPherson restoration grad. Uh, his experience and his wrenching, he's here to talk about his latest adventure that he's chronicling. It's called Six Ways to Sunday, where he is taking his 1989 Honda XR250R and six different vintage racing track disi- uh, disciples, vintage motocross, cost crunchy, road racing, flat track, and t- trials, which I can hear everyone now saying, except for Bruce, who's probably going to be all down with this because he's a biker. This is, an, this is everyone's racers. Why is this interesting? And I'm going to quote a line from his first race where five minutes before the start, the bike starts leaking oil. I didn't drive across the country just to drink beer in a parking lot. So I assure you, Kyle Smith is one of us. You're going to enjoy this show. Yeah, I'm down with some motorcycle racing. I keep it on four wheels. He's also, well, he also is, he's restored a Model A. He's got an Austin Healey. Check out Kyle's Garage. Check out his articles on Haggerty. Uh, Yeah, this is, this is going to be a good show. Awesome. And then after that, we're doing the AMA, probably live show. So if you have any interesting <laughs> questions, I, I think it's if you have anything you want us to talk about, send it to us at our social media, everyone.racers at gmail.com or whatever. Uh, and look for the link. Watch the social media because we are going to send a Zoom link out and you can join us and listen to this travesty of, uh, <laughs> of broadcasting live. Yes. And maybe even join us. Maybe we'll turn on your microphone and you get to talk. Who knows? All right. So there it is. Uh, what else? And no music. We're just going to go out on music. Thank and you for downloading. Na, 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 na. I hope you enjoyed this week's edition na, 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 na. of Everyone Racers. Oh, welcome hang on. I have it. Oh. Oh. Yes. We also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because everyone can be a racer. Even you. If you enjoyed this, oh, thank you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's totally free. Then go to iTunes and give us a five star rating. If you hate us, give us five stars and tell us why. If you have any questions or comments, put it right down there in the doodly do. Right, right down there in the doodly do. Just type right down there. Um, yeah, smash that like button. Hit the little bell. Subscribe. Watch while you're asleep. We don't care. We just want to get those numbers up a little your bit. Your dogs. Your dogs. Yeah. My dogs yeah. love this show. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, you can also hit us up on the Facebook page. Uh, everyone racers or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com you can still text us 484-243-0455 mental are you do you have your phone with you at work are you can you respond to the text messages not at work send me pictures of your junk anyway there you go uh, i have to keep it in a locker outside i'll go get he it he loves <laughs> junk pics i every junk, junk pic that junk. has been sent to us on that text line i have genuinely enjoyed <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, text us 484-243-0455. Find us on Instagram or Twitter at everyone.racer. Thanks again and until next week, keep the shiny side up. Unless you're like Chrissy and you just got your first dent, then just keep those wheels down.